Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create a podcast background in basically After Effects, Premiere, and Photoshop because you're kinda of gonna need all three of these. And let me kinda of show you what I'm talking about when I say a podcast background. So let's just play this right here. This is some test audio just to sort of go. So as you can see, it's just a background with a moving element on the bottom that gives the illusion, well, it's not exactly an illusion, it's tied into the vocals. This helps because um, a lot of days people like to do podcasts online and you know you can upload it to something called, like iTunes and a podcast service but usually in addition to that people like to upload it to their YouTube channel if their YouTube personality or something like that and when they do that they want a background to put on it as well. So instead of just putting a picture or just a black screen they add this little audio element into the bottom and that makes it a little bit more interesting and they can sometimes add subtitles to the bottom of that which I'll show you how to do in Premiere Pro as well and then you can kind of get this this neat video that goes along with your podcast so that you can share it in an interesting way that's built for the platform like YouTube. So this is going to be going from Photoshop into here into um, After Effects and then After Effects we're going to render it out and bring it into Premiere Pro and finish it in there. So it's a kind of a multi um, program sort of effect but I think that it's important that you can understand how to use each one of these programs so that you can create the entire effect in the programs that it's designed to be created in. So let's get started. The first place we need to start is actually over here in Photoshop. So we're going to go ahead and open up Photoshop right here. And what we need to do is once it's open, we need to create an image that is um, the same dimensions as a video might be. So I'm going to go into File New, and then we're going to create something that's 1920 by 1080. If these, if this isn't a custom preset, go over here to the width and height, and just set it to 1920 by 1080. Resolution doesn't really matter here. Um, we can set it to something at high resolution though, since we have a high resolution um, shot. So I'm going to go at 300 pixels. Then we're going to give it a name. So let's give it. Um, running background. So let's say we're creating a podcast on running like we did in the example. So we're gonna hit the create button and then it's going to bring this white screen background. If it didn't you can go ahead and just create a new layer and color it white and then put it in the background, change the colors. You can do anything you want for this. This is your background that you're going to be working with. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to go find a graphic. So I just have this running that I just found on Google. Um, it's probably not copyright free, so you probably want to find a copyright free image, um, something like Pixabay or something like that that you can throw in the background and actually be able to use in your, your stuff. So we have this image right here, and I'm just going to, it's inserted, we're going to just go to it in the file, drag it in, and it'll come up like this with a box around it. And what this box is, is just its transform box, so I'm just going to hold shift bring it down in size and we're going to change up the style from the last one and we're going to make it a little bit smaller, a little bit more centered, maybe right about there. And so that's kind of be, going to be the only graphic we have here. We're going to keep this like a simple clean design. So over on the left side here we're just going to type some text, maybe something like running podcast. And then let's go ahead and just highlight all this. So hit control A so you highlight the stuff even that's disappeared right here. We're going to reduce this font to maybe 24. Looks good. Okay, so that's that's looking good right there. Reduce this down a little bit more. And then maybe on the right side we can create something else. So like on the last one I said with Adobe Masters, so I'll do the same thing. With and we'll click enter here, so that's on the new line. So now we have sort of a background created and we can move these elements around and get them sort of situated where we want them to be situated that's looking good and of course we can go into stuff like if we go to the window and we drop down into the uh, paragraph we can edit some of the stuff in the paragraph um, we can go to character and we could maybe reduce this space in between that that looks a little bit more natural and then if we let's see it's 26 so we'll just do the same thing over here we will we can actually disattach this so that it's not in our way and then we will drop this down to 26 as well just like so and now they're both they're both looking a little bit better and then let's go ahead and click right here and draw a guide in so you can see that I want them both to be on the same level so we're gonna drop this one down to the same level and there whoops and there we have it now we have sort of just a basic image that we're gonna work with spend some time use your brand style or your channel style to do this um, make it you know really unique to you so once we have this created we can just 
uh, click on this guy. It's not going to render out, so we're, I'm just going to actually keep the guide here. And maybe we're going to back this guy up a little bit. I feel like he's more centered because of this. If he moves over a touch, maybe a touch back to the right. And now we have this ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to click File, then Save As. Then we're going to save it into a folder or a location that you know. It's going to be Running Background for me, whatever the name you want to give it. Click Save. Of course, whatever that is, click OK. <laughs> then we're going to go into After Effects. And we're going to go into File, New. So just open up After Effects and create a new project. We're going to save the other one. And we're going to be presented with this blank screen. So what we need to do is we need to first create ourselves a composition. So we're going to go up to Composition, New Composition. And then we're going to go into here. And what we want is we want a width and a height of the same width and height that we created for the other video. 1920 by 1080 is perfectly fine right here. Frame rate, let's get it at about 30 frames a second. That's probably a good streaming frame. So we're not trying to go cinematic here. We're just trying to go with what the best online is, and that's 30. So 29.97 or 30, depending on what your personal preference is. They're both basically the same. Um, we're then going to create our new comp. We can name it something like running podcast. Click enter and we are going to be presented with the new comp down here. Now we're going to right click. We're going to import the file. So we're going to import the PSD file by itself. So we're going to click that. Click OK. We want merge layers. We don't want like individual layers to be imported. We just want it all as one Photoshop file. We're going to click that and drag it into the bottom. Then we're going to right click up here, we're going to import, file, and we're going to go ahead and import our audio file. Now then, something that's kind of neat about this way of doing it is that if I go over here and I wanted to change the name or something, I can actually go into the text tool right here and I can say, let's say with Adobe Masters and someone. Yeah, I, wanted to, I, I want it like this for some reason. So now I can go and I can resave this. So I'm going to go to the file and save again. And now, in a couple of seconds, it updates over here in uh, After Effects. So any changes I make over here are updated over here. Um, my bad, I was off the screen. So basically what I did was I went up to, uh, to the right, I opened up Photoshop, and I just made an edit. So we can do something like this. We can delete these this so it's and so and then now I hit control s or f up here to file save and you'll see that if I look on the bottom the back here I click on it it updates so whatever is happening in Photoshop is happening in After Effects and that's what's really neat about this link right here so if we create it in Photoshop we can keep manipulating it and changing things and redoing things in After Effects through Photoshop so now we have this file up and running. We have, sure, we're going to keep the and so in there. And what we're going to do next, we're going to go up to layer. Uh, make sure you're clicked on the comp. Layer, new, solid. And we are going to go ahead and just make it a white solid. It doesn't matter. Then we're going to go over here to effects and presets. Um, just the effects and presets tab. And we're going to search audio. A-U-D-I-O. And so we have two choices here. The audio spectrum is going to be the one that works the best for this situation. Audio waveform is like a continuous line that's going to jump. Audio spectrum is going to give those bars. We're going to drop it onto the white solid here. And you'll see that the white solid disappears and it's replaced by this audio spectrum right here. So first thing we want to do is we want to move this start and end point down. So we want to click this and we do want to drag it to a better location under our graphics here move this one the same we kind of want them exactly the same we want a straight line here so we're gonna, I'm going to type this in 845 845 looks good and now we're going to go into here we're going to grab that audio that we imported earlier the podcast audio that you've created and we're going to drop that into the bottom right here and now we're going to go back into that white solid and we can give it a name that'll actually make sense so if I right click on this rename we can name this audio spectrum uh, spectrum and then now we're going to drag this to the bottom and we're going to go back to composition. Oh, not the bottom. Above here. And then now what we want is actually to keep it at the top so we can still see it. And then now if we play it, you'll see that the audio doesn't react at all. That's because we need to go into audio spectrum and we need to change where it's getting its audio from. We don't want it getting it from itself because there's no audio on this layer. We want it to grab from the test.wave format right here. And now it's going to be grabbing the audio from this file and it's going to be basically manipulating it. So if you'll see, I'll click play again and you'll notice the same audio from the beginning. This is some test but almost nothing is happening. And that's because we need to increase our maximum height right here. So let's go to a point where there's just a little bit so we can see kind of where it's going to be. So we can see like there's a, 
a little bit of a pop right here. So we're going to drag our maximum height up now, up to something visible, and then we're going to play it again. This is some test audio, just to sort of go over. What and this is looking good. Maybe just a little bit extra height, and I think that this will be perfectly fine. We don't want anything too wild because when you get to really those high ones, you're going to get higher and higher and higher and higher. So this looks fine. This looks like a great audio spectrum. It's interesting and it's working. Now we can go into here like into frequency and bands. We can add more of them to make it a little bit more full, a little bit more uh, controlled. And then we can go down here and we can change the color too. So let's change it to something that's actually in the scene. Uh, my eyes are brought to this, maybe this this blue the most. So we'll go with that and we'll do the exact same thing. We'll click and we'll drag another blue. And now let's add a little bit of thickness to these. So instead of three, we can bump it up just a little bit. And now the audio matches the colors in this. And suddenly we have this working. This is some test audio just to sort of go over what a so we have our audio spectrum going and it's looking great the next step is going to actually be go to the render queue we're going to go to composition um, back to here click on this composition we're going going to go to add to render queue and then we're going to export it into lossless quality this is just to prevent us from actually losing any quality quality when we export this we can do a media encoder or we can send it to media encoder and compress it here but I'm gonna be sending it to um, Premiere after this, so I don't wanna do this. So this is one way of doing it. You can export it, then drag it into Premiere. Another way of doing it is to actually just click right here. We're going to save this file, and we're gonna do the exact same thing we did with Photoshop. So I'm gonna go into here, and I'm gonna save this as, let's go running project two to make sure I don't go over the example and I was showing you. I'm gonna click save, and then we're going to go and we're gonna open up Premiere Pro gonna click Premiere Pro right here. We're gonna let it load really quickly and what we're gonna be doing in here is we're gonna be doing the exact same thing we did in After Effects except now we're adding another element to the chain. We're going to be going um, to create a file that is 1980 by 1020 right here. So we're just gonna go new project um, running again. Click OK then we're gonna go up to wait a second for it to load file new project oh my bad that's just where we were open up running we're gonna go up to sequence click on the timeline sequence or file new and then sequence and then we're going to go ahead and choose the exact same thing 1080 um, 1080p by 30 frames per second we're going to click OK on that let's move to the editing workspace let's drop that back down let's move to the editing workspace so that we have sort of more of the traditional look here and then we're going to import and we're going to go back to the desktop and we're going to find the file which is right here and then we're going to actually import the After Effects file itself. This saves us from having to, um, we're going to the running podcast, we want to import, so it wants you to import a composition, so make sure you just choose the composition that you created, click import, So because you, you can only import one composition at a time. So anyway. The reason we're going to do this is now that we don't have to render it out and get that gigantic AVI file, now we can actually just bring it into here and it's already linked, which is actually really, really neat because it's only going to do the rendering one time at the very end, which is going to be maximum quality. So this is going to go to into this. Uh, so our Photoshop element right here is going to go into our After Effects and then our After Effects is going to come into Premiere Pro. So why I want to come in here is for two reasons. First off, After Effects is not very good at audio. So what we want to do is we want to unlink that audio that we added into After Effects and we want to re-import it into Premiere Pro. So we're going to re-import it and we're just going to drag it and drop it back on. This ensures that we don't lose any audio quality through the process. And you'll see that uh, there's a lot of excess here so we're going to trim this down. We're going to zoom this in. And so this is what our end file is going to be. And so now we have this perfectly in quality high quality audio track added on top of this and the two are linked together because we, did it, we didn't do any modifications in the After Effects to it. The next reason I want to do here is because we can actually go up to Window and we can open up the captions and if you wanted to create subtitles this would be where you would create the subtitles. Now there's no real quick way of doing this, there's not like a magic button where it's going to add subtitles in. You're going to actually have to type out the subtitles yourself and then add them into the box. I have a tutorial that fully goes over this, making the subtitles look good and styling them and everything. 
So I'm just going to uh, leave that out of this tutorial because it's a little bit of a lengthy process and I don't want to just make this longer than it already is. So I'm going to link that in the description below. If you want to check out the how to add subtitles, go ahead and check it out. If that's not something you want to do, then we can move on to the next step. So we've added subtitles or we haven't. Our next step now is just to go up to File, Export, Media, and this is where we're going to finish it all off. So we're going to choose the settings we want. I like H.264. It's a nice streamable content and it resolves quality, easy to upload to YouTube. Click on this button and it's going to save it uh, wherever you want so we can choose a location, give it a name, and then all we have to do right here is we have to click export. Export is going to just run through it and you can see that this is a very short file. So it's grabbing all the information from Photoshop. It's sitting in it sending it to After Effects, After Effects is then grabbing all the information and sending it to Premiere Pro. This way they're all sort of in their own respective areas and now if we go back to the desktop we can actually find the video right here. This is some test audio just to sort of go over what a podcast might be. And as you can see we have finished and created our final product. Now I'm noticing that the lines are a little bit blurry here so we can go over here to After Effects and we can see what might be causing that. It might be the softness right here so let's kind of go into here. Let's zoom this in and see if reducing the softness. Yep, yep, that'll do it. And you can see that if we go up to the final product the, blur, the lines are blurrier than up here which makes it a little bit obvious. So we can go in here, we can reduce the softness. Now all we have to do is hit Control S then go back to Premiere Pro and all the settings have already been changed. We don't have to re-render. We don't have to do any of that stuff. So we're going to go File, Export, Media. And we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to have it actually save over the previous file. Yes, I want to replace it. And we're going to export it once again. Yes, I want to replace it. And it's going to take its nine seconds to export. And you'll see that the effect that I just did in After Effects is now being re-rendered in Premiere Pro. You can go back to the final product. And now our lines are nice, crisp, and clear. That is it on this tutorial. Thanks everyone for joining me for this. I hope that this helped you create your podcast background. Uh, I know it's a little bit complicated going through all the programs. If you really want, you can do it all in probably After Effects and Premiere. But I think adding Photoshop in there gives you a lot more flexibility and it adds a lot of different elements that you can use for it. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and those in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, I make videos every other day on the Adobe related products. As you can see, I'm using a lot of them in this one. So really just a bunch. If you want to, um, you know, if you have a suggestion or you want something done, go ahead and those in the comments below and I will make sure to create that. This was actually created on a comment itself. So thanks everyone and until next time, see ya.